I don't know. I feel um, like Golden Freddy could beat Goku. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that's the official statement. Is Golden yeah. Freddy could probably take Goku. Um, not neither of them could beat Anya Forger though. That's, that's uh, a lot. Ladies, gentlemen, and those with the good sense to do away with the whole notion, I welcome you to the premier audio medium for all your Fazbear entertainment needs. The Freddy Fazbear Pizza Podcast. Note, FFPP is not responsible for any loss of appetite, disinterest, dismemberment, or other legally classified statuses. So strap in and enjoy. Hey everybody, a quick disclaimer here. So unfortunately, my audio was lost for this recording. Um, luckily demuted my guest today, which you'll meet. He's very lovely, uh, was able to get the discord audio on his end. So full disclosure, I do sound kind of bad. My audio is pretty rough in this one, uh, but he sounds good. So there's solace in that. Uh, sorry again about this, but it's a really good episode and I didn't want it to go to waste. So enjoy. Hello and welcome back to the Freddy Fazbear Pizza Podcast. It is your host with the toast, Rye Toast, here with a very special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Demuted. Uh, I do FNAF theories and otherwise just talk about a lot of indie horror stuff and I'm very happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. Well, Demuted's link is in the description and as far as today's topic, uh, I know that I've been getting a lot of questions for it. I've been wanting to do a big old episode on it. I thought uh, Demuted would be a great guest for it. So... The FNAF books, right? Uh, what what about? Them? <laughs> I oh, guess it, it, it's a big topic, and I'll let I'll let you get the first word in and kind of your initial thoughts. But as far as like actual topic goes, I'm thinking just you know all the questions going around it, the lore of the books, how the lore connects to the games, is it the same lore? You know stuff like that, and then like which books connect in which ways? There are three series after all. Um, but go ahead, just tell me your thoughts. Right. Um... Contrary to pop- popular belief, I do not hate the books. Um, uh, I actually, I would say that two of the three series I generally look at with like a real fondness to. I'm not the biggest fan of the Silver Heist trilogy. Um, I think the first book is pretty good, but two and three kind of drop the ball. Oh yeah, I have a I up on my channel right now. I have a whole video about why I like the Silver Heist specifically, and then I hate the other two. Yeah. Um. But Fazbear Frights and Tales from the Pizza Plex, I think those those are both good. Um, and I really think the short story format is a good way of telling these stories. Um, I really think that that's probably the... I don't want to say the peak of the writing of the series, because that sounds weird, but in terms of like books, those two series are probably the best it gets. I see where you're coming from. I mean, I, I know Fazbear Frights, I feel like, specifically gets a lot of flack. And I think it's just from the, like, kind of weird stuff it introduced. But I think as a standalone, like, horror short story series, I think those are really, really strong entries. I feel like it's kind of really the, like, because, like, when I was growing up, uh, I, I I don't know. Is your age public? How old are you? I'm 21. <laughs> it is public. Okay. So, yeah, when we were growing up, then, like, <laughs> I feel like Goose, Goosebumps was the, like, the go to, like, young, like, not yeah. child, but like young adult horror. And I feel like Fazbear Frights and Tales from the Pizza Plex really picked up that torch well. Granted, Tales from the Pizza Plex, I feel like, is a lot more intense than Fazbear Frights was. Yeah. Um, and that could just be a lack of familiarity because I, my my truth my 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 honest truth i'm still trying to make my way through the silver eyes trilogy i have not touched fazbear frights i know a lot of the <laughs> plot summaries but i have not read like any fa- the only full story from fazbear frights i read was um the fazgu one because i had to know oh my god uh, <laughs> and yeah i will say genuinely my hot take i kind of really like that story it's um, not a bad story. I think it's done really well. <laughs> it's not a bad story. It's just the word Fazku is going to naturally yeah. put so many people off to the whole idea. And I can understand why. And, and maybe it's because I like Junji Ito's work a lot. But Fazku for me, for some reason, like the concept of the like the, you know, it told me everything. And then the like the unsureness and the twist at the end really harkens for to me. It harkens to like Junji Ito stuff. So that's why I really like that story. <laughs> so actually, specifically, that one to me does not remind me of a Junji Ito story, although I do like his stuff. It reminded me specifically of the Stephen King short story that I had read because it was a similar vibe of what the hell am I reading? Um, if you've ever read Grey Matter from his short story book Night Shift, oh, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. lot like I, that. I've, <laughs> I've, I haven't fully like 
I haven't read a lot of Stephen King stuff, but I'm my parents really, really like Stephen King, so I generally know a lot of his stories. Um, no, yeah, I know that one. I, I see, I see where you're coming from though with that. Like, it's a very like, huh, kind of story. Yeah, every every like horror author just has their one really weird and out there story. Yeah, no, I mean, granted, I wouldn't even argue that's Fasco for Fazbear. I think that might be, uh, oh, what is that? I don't want to say. Play? Yeah, that one. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. I'm like, I don't want to describe why it's the weird one. I just don't remember the title. I, I I know all the weird ones, man. I know all the weird ones because Twitter will not let me forget them. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then as far as like I like like we said, like the first Silver Eyes book is pretty solid. Like FNAF separated, I would probably rate it like a good like six, seven out of ten for like young adult fiction. It's not bad. Um, it's really not it's that like bad. It's pretty solid. I'm halfway through the twisted ones, and I can tell <laughs> where why like <laughs> why the silver eyes is talked about, and the tw- the twisted ones in the fourth closet is kind of not as much talked about. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, the twisted ones specifically. I would have liked it if they left Afton mostly out of the story. The fact that he's in there, he at didn't all, need to be there. He didn't need to be there. If it was something, they could have had a new villain or just not had, like, a main villain. Make it clear that the Twisted Ones are the Nightmares or something like that. Yeah. I mean, they put Nightmare as- on the cover of the book. <laughs> right? Like, the, the the book covers are fascinating for their choices to me. Like, we've got Nightmare on the cover. We've got, and, like, the other two, I could see it. Because, like, sure, Freddy's on the Silver Eyes. First off, it's the first FNAF book. You gotta have Freddy on it. Of and they do go to the restaurant. So, like, that one makes sense. Yeah. Is Nightmare in the Twisted Ones? Well, no, that's the thing. And I think, you know, <laughs> that that's probably, like, the biggest point in my eyes. That's the biggest point towards the people who say that the Twisted Ones are the Nightmares. That's where I gotta be like, you got me. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I... And then with, like, uh, at least, like, with the fourth closet, like, Funtime Freddy, yeah, he's in there. Got it. Check. Yeah. Like, that makes sense. <laughs> Um, and then as far as tales go, I've read most of them because I feel like those are the like you gotta read them right now if you're doing like current FNAF theories. Tales um, is so I feel important. Like they're they're pretty like the as far as like before we get into the lore because that'll be a big discussion. As far as the quality, they're pretty good. Like they're very graphic, like weirdly graphic, <laughs> um, especially compared to like some of the other books I've read. Cause like you read the silver eyes and sure it was the first book. They didn't want to go too hard, but I think like the worst thing that happens there is like people like scrape their knee and then like one dude gets stabbed. Yeah. Like, <laughs> specifically in the I mean, heart, which good on William for figuring out how to do that. But <laughs> right. Like there's the spring lock scene, I guess you could go for, but like besides that, and even then they like kind of, they definitely didn't want to viscerally describe the spring lock scene they were just like oh and then the spring locks activate and then like half a page later he's dead yeah i think they get away with that though because william does describe earlier on like what happens so like we know what happens we just don't see it happening yeah and i don't think there has to be like gore violence or anything it was just interesting to me that like it's been a like understandably they haven't gone really into that because like you don't need to especially with horror i'm a big proponent of like gore is completely unnecessary it can add to the horror completely unnecessary to good horror um but and then you go to fast you go to tales of the pizza plex and you get people like like in the mimic like the dude gets like used as a human door ram and they describe his head going into his shoulders i'm like jesus christ oh my god (laughs) i when i refer to that story sometimes i go back to the wiki to just like catch up on story beats that i may have forgotten I love how yeah. the wiki describes that scene. They describe it as uh, the mimic turtling a guy. They, because, it does. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like how a turtle puts its head back into its shell. That happens to or a like, guy. <laughs> I like to shock friends who know nothing about FNAF. And they they, they know like general, like what like normal, healthy, mentally stable individuals know about FNAF. Like, oh yeah, that's that one game, right? Um, but <laughs> I love <laughs> taking, uh, I think it was the the last epilogue on, on uh, Tiger Rock and I'll just read the last page for them where it like describes Kelly just being eviscerated Jeez, and I'm like yeah. yeah so this is the like the material of the, the franchise it's <laughs> oh man and specifically with, I guess specifically with the Tales books as well I do think that in general they're better written but also the concepts yeah. themselves are just like way more interesting to me than uh, oh yeah I loved um, 
Drowning. I think Drowning is probably my favorite so far. Drowning uh, is really the, good. The series. I think Tiger Rock is my favorite story. And Tiger I th- Rock's really good. I th- that that one consistently. The the thing that like makes me think about that the most is I just have this image in my head where I describe Tiger Rock like the VR version of Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I mean, he kind of is. Yeah. I know. Um. I I, I liked Nexi, but I can't shake the idea in my brain that it is just almost exactly Ron's gone wrong, but like more violent. <laughs> uh, did you end up seeing that movie? <laughs> I did actually. I've got a younger brother and we, uh, we ended up watching it when it came out. Like it's a decently, it's a cute movie. Nothing wrong. It's like a solid, like young family kids movie, but it Nexi is like almost beat for beat. Ron's gone wrong. Like, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> vaguely European child in a poor family where they, they have to like make their own stuff. Uh, everyone has the new technology. Like it, like there's so many weirdly similar story beats in that, in that book. But really, I really, okay. If Scott was like dedicated to like world building, it'd be really funny if like later on in the stories, we just saw like, Oh yeah. And that, that girl's walking around with her Nexi doll. And then in the back of people's Honestly, minds, I feel like, <laughs> Buddy Tronics could make a way better, like small antagonist than the wind up music men could. Like yeah. if we're in like a separate environment, because there's so many more options, and you can go a lot, you can lean a lot more into like the Sid's toy factory of like really messed up looking toys, um, rather than everything just like one of three small music men. <laughs> right. You know, I I, I know that uh, there's a team out there who's making that like a remaster of security breach i'm just saying Mm. you got options (laughs) you got options i'm i really hope i i I haven't looked at i know the project's going on i haven't looked at like their progress or anything i really hope um either they do or i'm kind of hope they don't so i could but i'm so i'm so surprised that no one has made a fan game that's just like very very traditional fnaf but in the settings and with the characters of Security Breach. Right. I'm so surprised that hasn't happened yet. Like, it seems, like, obvious. Like, if I were a game dev, I would have made that already. But For real. Like, I know nothing about coding, and no indie development team needs me on there because no one needs an ideas guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I can't that right assist away. with that at all. But someone should. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Um. um so, so I guess talking about the books and the quality let's go lore okay we'll start we'll right. start with like i guess more agreeable topics let's leave tales for the we'll go uh uh series by series okay i feel like i feel like we agree and this is just the vibe i get from like the content of yours that i've seen that the silver eyes trilogy is not canon to the games but the rules and characters are similar enough that it can be used to interpret the games. Right. I would I would generally say, yeah, that is how I put it. Um, the way I generally treat it is it is not the same story, but it's how the story could have gone. So like mm-hmm. um so like in the main story, we know that William kills Charlotte. Um, but we don't know yeah. about Sammy ever existing. In my mind, mm-hmm. the games would be the timeline where Henry doesn't make Charlie bots or anything, um, but the Silver Eyes is that. when he does. Things like that. Just how the story could have gone if things were slightly different. I could see that. Um, like, And that, that way, we can still use them to learn, like, okay, well, in this universe, Remnant works like this. Um, the, like these things do that. These characters have these names and things like that. Um, right. I think that's where I generally am with. It. I feel like that's the normative position for the Silver Eyes, where like, no, this exact story did not happen, but we can learn a lot from it. Um, exactly. Well, that, that was check easy. So Fazbear Frights. Now we're getting a little bit he- hotter water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let what 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 do what do you think the relation to Fazbear Frights and the game lore is? Um, well, here's the thing. Before Tales came out, I did not want Frights to be canon at all, and I didn't believe yeah. any of it was canon. But then, like, especially more recently, I've been thinking, so what if it is? Does that really change much about what happens in the games? In my mind, I do think Stitch Line is probably canon. I'm not sure about other stories within, but one's definitely connected to the Stitch Wraith. I think those are canon. 
Okay. I'm so again, I haven't fully read them. So I this is like a, this is probably my biggest gray area of the franchise because I just have not had the time to delve into it in the way it deserves. Um from my understanding, I've been treating it very similar to the Silver Eyes, where I don't think that these stories actually happened, but I think they exist to tell us things that are possible in this universe. And that's the main reason why I'm still like very much a two spirits within Golden Freddy believer, because I do believe the theory that like the stitch line, whether or not the stitch line stories like the stingers happened, it is the books showing us, hey, two spirits can be in one robot. Like that's a that's a possibility. I um, mean, I can understand that. I personally don't believe in the two spirits in Golden Freddy thing. I can understand oh, okay. why people believe that, but I do think it is probably just one. Um, if you ask me about like uh, what happened to Crying Child, then I do think mm-hmm. it's either. First off, I have like a major theory that <laughs> that people uh, who they were not uh, open about. And that's the idea oh, which, of there, be, there being two Golden Freddies. Oh, um, uh, I think I remember that one. Yeah. Which, like, I mean, it is possible. Like, especially knowing that Freddies and Fred Bears were open around the same time. Yeah. Otherwise, I just don't think anything really happened with the crying child. I'm kind of of the opinion that, like, I don't, I'm not married to, like, I do believe that they're both in Golden Freddy. But I think the important part is that the crying child whether or not he is possessing golden freddy is around the location i think that's kind of what alone together was getting into now this is one of the new books i know you haven't you know the stories but you haven't been able to yet to read them because it came out like two days ago right Um, that's why i haven't been theorizing on them i can't double check my work yeah that's that that's i I did with dinophobia but like the moment i got my hands on the book i was like oh alone together is getting a couple videos um (laughs) but a big thing about alone together was like if a ghost can't find its body it will it's more likely to just wander around the location it died in i so i feel like with the crying child the weird thing is as far as we're aware he didn't die in a freddy's location right in fact like he's got put into like a coma ish in the games aside from no actually excluding charlotte because charlotte had the puppet i think he is the only character who did not die and then like physically come into contact with an animatronic that we know of if he's still around i think take, he might just I be think a there's ghost six i think there's six characters that fit that description i think it's the crying child i think it's also the dead child incident all five of them oh right that's my right. hot take because i feel like the another thing this book is telling us is it doesn't say if your body is found, you move on. It doesn't say that because like the grandma is there and she's like, oh, I found myself, you know, like she's she's almost specifically tells us in, through implication that like she's here to visit old friends and talk to her like ne- her grandson. So like it doesn't say your body is found, you have to move on, but it does imply that like it's easier to move on once your body is found. And I don't see any reason to believe that if the dead child incident even does happen, because that you could argue it doesn't, but if it does, <laughs> those bodies are lying all over the place. Like they were found. <laughs> that, that whole story, uh, FNAF 2 specifically, it went from being my favorite game in the series to probably one of my least favorites to talk about, because I, I just don't like the idea of there being multiple like mass murders like that. I prefer just the one. I really I don't think Scott does either. I'm so I'm so certain that I don't think Scott intended to make two child incidents. I think yeah. he I, I think I think fi- I think he didn't consider at the time cuz this is still FNAF 2. This is really early on. I don't know if he considered the uh implication of Foxy go 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 when he made it. Right. I think he probably just made that to be a spooky mini game and then suddenly hey, it's a great mini game. Yeah. <laughs> it works. It gets the message um, across. But now suddenly there's 10 dead kids and uh, what? (laughs) Um, So, yeah, but uh, as far as Fazbear Frights goes to, to, I guess, to transition more into the Tales of the Pizza Plex, I there's just I feel like Fazbear Frights goes in so many directions that it might just be cleaner to. And I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I believe Fazbear Frights specifically is the one where Scott was like, some of the stories are more so some of the stories aren't and it's kind of like a 
interpret what you will situation, which isn't helpful. So, but it also doesn't fully confirm or deconfirm in either direction. So I think the, the way he put it was that some are directly connected to the games and some are not. Um, okay. But I think that was just his way to like I could excuse see that meaning the stingers. Yeah, I I, I think that would personally. I think that's just like uh, his explanation for like why one of the stories has the sister location bunker in it, or why fucking Foxy is in Step Closer. <laughs> yeah, or or my favorite picture of all of FNAF that one graphic novel. I think it was a nightmare, so like it makes sense. But then one Fun of the graphic Foxy novels driving were- the car. <laughs> Yeah, Fun Time Foxy yeah. just happy as can be driving a taxi. That's so goddamn funny to me. <laughs> room for one more um, is great. I love Room for One More. <laughs> um, that and uh, and being someone who hasn't read Fazbear Frights and not knowing all the details, on the surface, to me, Eleanor is like, hmm, are you just supposed to be like the Fazbear Frights version of uh, Silver Eyes's? baby like is that what i'm supposed to be getting here that's the because it's strange i I don't think throughout the entire series like it's made clear in pretty much everything outside of the books that she is like a version of baby that's how she was drawn the character encyclopedia like says oh she looks like baby but she's never said to do that in the books themselves it's never said like we get a description of her but no character is ever like huh she kind of reminds me of circus baby which makes me think I considering I do think that Eleanor, because she's involved in Stitch Lines, she is a canon character, and we know that like internally she is like almost one hundred percent an agony monster. Yeah. I do think that she is just supposed to be like a twisted reflection of baby. Who's probably made from William's that. agony. So more so like if we have baby this creature of more majority remnant. Uh, Eleanor being the agony reflection of that. Exactly. She may even be. That. She may even be the agony reflection of uh, of Elizabeth's death, which would explain why her name Eleanor sounds so similar. Um, yeah, ca- I can see that. I mean, I've been a big proponent of Shadow Freddy being an agony reflection of Cassidy and Golden Freddy. So, I mean, I, I'm I'm not opposed to that idea. Now, th- the idea I just said, I'm not implying that uh, anyone nor you also agree with that, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, I uh, I don't think it's a bad idea at all. Um, and specifically, like, because when Eleanor starts to come apart, she's described as just looking like inky black underneath the surface, which makes me yeah. think that she could just be a shadow. Fair. Yeah, she could just fully be that. If not, like, that possessing, like, a spare shell that was left at one of these locations. Right. Um. So I, we've been we've been skirting around it a bit. 22 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. So the Tales books. Tales books. Um, <laughs> this is probably where the debate comes in. Um, I, I, Ooh, yeah. I'll, I guess I'll, I'll lay it out. I'll lay out every, all my thoughts. I'll let you lay out all your thoughts, and we'll get into it. So my, I guess my opening statement, right? I have been treating Tales like a much – so consider uh, – I guess we'll use Silver Eyes because we agree on that point, that right. Silver Eyes is like not canon, but close. It's a what if. It's useful. I've been treating tales in the same way where I don't think the majority of the tales books are canon to the game specifically, but I think all of them are possible within its universe. And I think that the primary goal of these tales books is to kind of tell us what is possible, what the rules of these new characters that are being introduced are and can be, um and even some stories could be fully canon but i don't think they would have happened at our pizza plex in the game since there are multiple pizza plexes yeah um and i think i think that's where i'm at where i do not think like and i guess my big my big departure is i don't think the mimic we see in the epilogues (laughs) <laughs> is the mimic we see in the games <laughs> only specifically if it is there's a big gap between <laughs> epilogue eight and security breach yeah that's where i'm at like if there if it is the same character there is a huge gap we have no information on all right um uh, but that's where i'm at so i'll let you have the floor so where i'm at first off i totally understand why you think that because for a long time that's how i treated every book in the series yeah i am of the loud car going by oh hey me too 
<laughs> I've got uh my windows are closed because it's raining, but I've got a, a window unit in that window because it like it's still like summer is starting to go away finally. Um, but because I've got that window unit, cars are so loud right there. Yes, yeah, so I'm practically next to a highway, so cars are always just zipping by. I'm I'm one block away from a turnpike, and I'm across the, uh, and my street that I live on is like. It's not a highway, but it's like a business route highway where it's like there's a highway on one end and a highway on the other end. And this is the like intersection part. <laughs> yeah. Um. So where I'm at with the books, I do think that the Tales books can be treated as canonical simply because I don't think there's enough evidence out there for us to say that they are. I think everything has been pointing towards these books being way more important than the uh, than the former ones. Like, there could be a case made that the Frights books aren't canon, and I would be willing to hear that out, because maybe they aren't. But with Tales, I just feel like there's a lot more here that says they are than they aren't. Anything that, like, happens in the books that you can't, like, uh, that isn't seen in the games, they have built-in explanations for why you don't see them in the games, you know? Stuff like that. Fair. Stuff that's written to, like, explain why it's not in the final game. I think that specifically is the tipping point to me because like to take a take Belora's attraction for example like mm -hmm. we know that that gets taken down and we know that's why we don't see it in the final game but like yeah. it didn't have to get taken down in the story there didn't have to be a whole part about it getting taken down um if it or meant, I mean, even with the the storyteller, right? Yeah, like or two the books later, one of the, one of random stories, like, oh yeah, they're taking down the storyteller, and then they move on. Yeah, exactly. Those lines they tell me that like that Scott or whoever's writing them trying to cover up their tracks a little. Um, um I do. Sorry, have, go on. I do have a question for you. Who do you think built sure. the mimic? That's where I'm at right now. So, <laughs> so to respond to what you said, I'll go on to that. To respond to that, and I do want to real quick because I didn't say it up top. It's obvious I shouldn't have to say this, but you know, I made a lighthearted joke about FNAF Twitter, and I got <laughs> DMs that I'm not going to disclose. Um, but <laughs> uh, hey, both of these opinions and any other opinion on the books and their canonicity are fine. You're allowed to believe whatever the hell you want to believe move on this is a game about a pizza bear it's not that serious <laughs> game about anyway a pizza bear. <laughs> <laughs> um so as far as i i i definitely see where you're coming from like i i totally understand both sides of this where like the hesitancy of assuming they are canon and the evidence for them being canon like i understand both sides of that i think with a lot of this franchise really but specifically with this question it's one of those things where like you could make a perfectly good and healthy timeline of events with either assumption, as long as you stick to that assumption while you make that timeline. Um, and I think there's evidence for both sides of it. So that's where I'm at. I, I'm currently still on the uh, hesitancy side. Um, I mean, hell, who knows? It, again, I've said for a long time, if uh, if any representation of, the ti of Tiger Rock specifically, <laughs> Edwin Murray's name, or David's name pop up in a FNAF game, I will do the Stan is wrong song on Twitter like the <laughs> next day. <laughs> um, so who do I think built the mimic? Yeah. It's, it's a rough one. I, I don't, I don't think William did. Okay. That, I think that would probably I, be I, my answer too. I don't think yeah, he did. I can, I can put a period there. I think there's a couple ways to look at it. Either. I could see I I really don't know. I could see it being if it is Edwin um that introduces a whole lot of stuff which is interesting to me. Um if it's a character we I either I feel like it's got to either be Edwin or Henry is where I'm at cuz I don't think it's William cuz if it was if supposed to be William I feel like Mr. Burroughs would have been the one who made um the mimic because i do feel like in the storyteller if there's any kind of reflection or parallel to see there it's william and henry mm. which is strange because mr burroughs hates the franchise so that doesn't track but we have like 
bad guy with rabbit in his name and like a nicer older man you know so like when i look at those two um <laughs> you know burrows himself makes me think did scott do that on purpose or did, is that just a huge just a coincidence <laughs> yeah or is it is it just I, right, him he's like, pulling his a prank name is mr burrows and wait hold, let me i'm gonna cut out getting this book i kind of want to check i i don't know if i'm mandelaing myself but i swear he wore a purple hold on <laughs> Um, okay, so I found it on the wiki. He's not wearing purple. Early on, he was described to wear wire-rimmed glasses, burgundy silk tie, crisp blue cotton shirt, blue suit coat, but he later changes into a gray suit and a deep purple handkerchief that matches his tie. <laughs> so, like, you that's gotta be on purpose. Not on purpose to mean it means something, but either on purpose because it means something, or Scott really likes to fuck with us. <laughs> I mean... Because his name is Mr. Burroughs, and he wears a gray suit and a purple tie. Come on! <laughs> so... so- <laughs> I thought for sure when I heard that he wore purple that the way this was going to go is, oh, okay, Glitchtrap has infected this guy's mind, so now he's technically yeah. the C, the <clears throat> the chairman or whatever. I don't know what Burroughs is. Uh, he is the... He's up there. <laughs> he's up there. He's important. He's the owner of Fazbear Entertainment. He's not even the, the whole he's owner? The board ch- he's the owner and board chairman of C- Fazbear Entertainment. He's the guy. Holy that, shit, yeah, he is the guy. He's Mr. Fazbear right now. Well, was. Rip. Rip to a real one, I guess. <laughs> well, was it? Was he all that real, or was he, like, kind of psychopathic? No, actually incredibly fake individual. He absolutely <laughs> despised Fazbear. <laughs> like, um, yeah, he's, he's, I, I literally, think, he's literally the cartoon guy. We need to make money. Right? Well, I think, and I, I know I got... um. I think I brought this up on the the game theory live stream where like that was one of my biggest disagreements with the game theory timeline is Mrs. Afton's involvement, specifically when it comes to uh, owning Fazbear. I think I I do genuinely think whether or not the books are canon, the the explanation for Fazbear getting from FNAF 6 to the Pizzaplex is a very, very money smart, common sense, stupid businessman coming in being like, this is a very profitable franchise that if i spruce it up a little bit we can make some money and just cutting every corner on the way until glitch trap takes over his mind or yeah. kills him and replaces him digitally or whatever that like at some point it switches to glitch trap yeah but i don't to get to there yeah. just a dumb guy i don't think the <laughs> resurrection necessarily has to be supernatural i think it's more so just you know capitalists got to capitalize um Although I will say, specific- FNAF has been FNAF has accidentally been a very anti-capitalist franchise the whole <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> like- I will actually say this because I know someone pointed it out somewhere. I think on either you uh, on either Reddit or Twitter or something, mm-hmm. and it's something I've been like dodging um, before Game Theory's timeline came out, where they came up with uh, the Mrs. Afton is behind everything theory. I also yeah. came up with that theory in a video of mine, <laughs> like a month before, and I just abandoned that immediately oh, after no. that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, right? Here's the thing. It's one of those things where, like, it's not technically, like, impossible. It's just we took a question we have no context for, an answer we have no context for, and said, there you go and like i can't disprove you but that's because we know nothing about either one (laughs) right and it's not something i still Um, believe in i don't think that was right i mean it's it's possible i'm not i'm not saying it's impossible especially i think the strongest evidence for it is um the mrs afton robot at the head of the table in the silo right and kind of that's it but i mean that is decent evidence because like why else would she be there but do we even Um, know that that is supposed to be like so much has happened since then, and we've we've been introduced to a lot of other characters, especially in the Tales Fair. books. Are we even sure that that's supposed to be the Afton family anymore? I I personally am. I feel like the other four are strong enough to assume, because we've got the one that kind of looks like Circus Baby. We've got the one without a head. We've got the one in a uniform, and then we've got the one, the, like the ringleader top hat one. Like, that feels very core Afton to me. I mean, maybe, but on the other on the other hand, I have to say, like, we technically only have a canon design for two of those four, and the other two, I think, are just they could be labeled assumptions. And the headless one, yeah. the headless one to me is, just seems really, really weird. I love when people thought that the crying child was in there, and that's how he decided to represent himself. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I. It is. It's weird. I think that's our safest assumption. I would say. I don't think it's like definite or anything. But uh, of of the assumptions we could have for that, I think that makes the most sense. I just realized my mic is maybe peaking this whole time, so I'm just gonna turn it down now. And if it has been <laughs> peaking this whole time, uh, no, it hasn't. You're crazy. Uh, gaslighting isn't real. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, you're crazy. Uh, you're not even listening. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're crazy inhale more of the nightmare gas um so yeah i think i'm still i i personally am still hesitant for canonicity and i think it's it's less that i because i don't care like i i don't care either way if it is or not like it can be cool great it it cannot be cool great i would like to know so I can like know what I'm working with at this point. Hey Scott, please make a goddamn <laughs> Reddit post. You, your one, Scott, your movie is coming out in two weeks, and the first time you've posted in four months was to make a lighthearted joke about Seth Meyers saying the name of your movie wrong. Which good for him. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> Which really funny, really funny meme. Talk about your movie. Um, <laughs> Actually, um, uh, but while while we're on like what the books being canon or not canon can do for us. I sure. think I think specifically if the books are canon and I'm I do believe that they are, it asks a whole new question. What happens between the end of the books and the beginning of Security Breach or even Ruin? Because I think yeah. we we mentioned this before the before the recording started. The mimic in Ruin does not resemble the mimic in the epilogue stories all that much. Neither one really neither one of them like not the one we see in the story of the mimic and not the one we see at the end of the epilogues like it, it is it's almost like we have three different versions of this character i i hesitate to say that they're different versions considering well, that it yeah, is i'm not it saying is they a... literally are different ver i just mean like we have very differently characterized and described versions of this character it could be one very long stretch of time I, or it could be maybe it is three i don't know but it, like the in the mimic the epilogues and in the game and in ruin those are very different things so like what is this stretch of time is it three actual different things like it, it's weird <laughs> yeah um you mentioned earlier that you had gotten like part way through my most recent mimic video and i do cover at, at the end of that what i think happens in the in-between chunk of time mm -hmm. um spoilers for the end of b72 as well for people watching sure yeah because the book's out but it's barely out so i get it <laughs> yeah um but at the end of that book we see the mimic get spring locked in a lemon and lime jester costume and it's supposedly yeah. just like shut down but yeah, she goes up and hits the switch but i think that that there might be the reason a lot of security breach happens I think the ultimate goal by the uh, by the time Security Breach starts was Vanny trying to get the Mimic working again after it had been spring locked. I do think that I could see that. I do think that the Mimic is burn trap, and it being put in that charging pod was by Vanny, and I think it was so that it could recover from being spring locked. I could see that. I mean, it makes the most sense. Like, if we're talking about like how the Mimic kind of work fits into security breach the idea of the mimic not yet being william and they they're maybe just trying to like make a perfect vessel to put glitch trap into that makes sense to me i th i think i, I think uh, uh dan said it really well dan cybert he was like narratively for security breach and ruin it makes the most sense to have you have this digital entity of like call it glitch trap call it mimic a one this digital entity that represents william and bad things and this physical thing that they're trying to perfect and once they put the digital into the physical they win and they in essence have afton back like that's their goal and ruin is what happens when that plan fails and they have to start over again yeah I could definitely, I definitely and think like, that I, that is I, I probably see the, that being like a good angle to go work at this with. So the way I had, the way I had put it is that, mm -hmm. um, Vanny takes the mimic out of the jester costume and decides to okay. patch him up 
with pieces from the different like Springtrap cosplays because at the time during like that era of the Pizzaplex there were a ton of like the uh recreations um sure I know there was a whole story about just there was a specifically a Springtrap cosplay in the Pizzaplex yeah um and, I think and that- not to mention, if, if Nexi is to be believed in the description of the Pizzaplex, these Pizzaplexes come equipped with these, like, vast warehouse of robotic parts underneath them. Like, yeah. Like and stri- you could you could argue maybe that's the Endo Maze, but I've, I don't know. The Endo Maze feels different. So, like, maybe it's just a place we don't get to see in game. Yeah. Um, and sp- I'm not really worried about where the parts came from. I just do right. think she repaired him using those parts and put him in a charging pod. Um, then my question would be where the body parts come from the body parts I, I <laughs> like on burn trap that one's more difficult um, but I will also say I, I, I will say that sorry, like on. such gnarly stuff happens in the books like we, we know that there were quite a few corpses down there <laughs> like there's oh, yeah. a lot of dead bodies it could be any of them it could be a combination of them for me I feel like it makes the most sense to me if Vanny is already trying to repair the mimic to make this really good vessel and they're already in the place where whatever remains and corpse left of Afton would be in, it would be in that location. To me, it makes the most sense of like, okay, trying to repair this. Let me use anything I can from whatever is left of William as well, not knowing that that would put his agony onto it as well. I'm also okay with that idea. I'm a bit more reluctant, though, because I do believe in Stitchline, and Stitchline puts a bit of a hangnail on that because Afton's body explodes. <laughs> Fair. Um, does Stitchline take place after FNAF 6? Um, so the, the timeline's I, not again, completely, I didn't, the timeline's not sure, completely I, clear, but it does seem like it takes place after FNAF 6, specifically the man in room 1280, the man in room 1280, it, first off, we got confirmation that it is about William. Um, yeah, which tracks. He gets brought to a hospital. Doctors have no idea how he's still alive, but they do know that he's being held in a, in a ceaseless, never-ending nightmare. Mm. Um, a nurse tries to kill him because she thinks, like, oh, I can smell the evil coming off this guy. But every time she tries to, a ghost stops her from doing so. Um, and eventually yeah. he gets wheeled out somewhere and his body just explodes. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> his agony, um, his agony covers a lot of things that later get used in the fright series. I, that story specifically, it's one of those that like, I personally hesitate to think is candid because to me that feels like in a very separate way telling us how William could be surviving. Like to me, the idea of anything leaving that pizza pl- pizzeria, but like to me, that pizzeria, it all burns down. It gets bulldozed over before anyone really knows what's going on with it. Like, I, I feel like that is just a place people don't go to. And eventually the pizza plex gets put, put on top of it because of like glitch trap or Vanny or something like that. Um, or even just because they already own that lot and it's cheaper to do it that way. I don't know. But to me, I don't feel like anything leaves that fake pizzeria until we break down into it through security breach. So when I when I hear the man in 1280, again, I again, I haven't read the vast reference. <laughs> I get it. When I hear the man in 1280's summary, and I have read the summary before, I feel like it's telling us like, hey, as long as UCN goes on, William is still somehow a player in this game. So I feel like that's what it's trying to tell us. And, and specifically because he explodes at the end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> so like if he explodes at the end of the story, why is there a rabbit suit with non-exploded body parts on Burn Trap? Now you could say the Burn Trap ending is in canon. But I challenge at that this point. Because... I don't care, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, right. I, I challenge that specifically for two reasons. Uh, the blob being present in ruin to me shows that Gregory saw the blob and bird trap. Um, and also like 
I would much, much faster, and this is a personal thing probably, this is a me problem, I would way sooner be willing to assume something in the books is not canon because of a game detail rather than assume something in the games is not canon because of a book detail. Right. I That's can, where I'm at. I can see that too. And I'm definitely not saying that like uh, Burn Trap is not meant to be uh, William or something. Sure. He's very obviously meant to at least remind us of William. Yeah. Or like, and that could be mimic shenanigans. That could be like, let me just make what he looks like, you know? Yeah. It could. That's the thing about the mimic is like literally if he doesn't look like himself, you could just say, oh, he's just doing his thing. He's just mimicking, you know. He says, "Hold on, guys, um, let me mimic." Like, yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I, I do think the mimic as a concept is really interesting. I think that's a really fun direction to take the story, and I'm curious what they do with that. Yeah. Um, uh, at... <sighs> so here's the thing about what I think happens after uh, Vanny puts the mimic in the charging pot, assuming that he is burn trap. Assuming he's burn trap. Assuming he's burn trap. Um, I do think we know by now that Gregory and Vanessa very likely went back after the princess quest ending. If that is yeah. the canon ending, they very likely went back and yeah. they went down into that basement. And that's why I think Gregory draws burn trap and the blob because he's at the very least saw burn trap. Yeah. Um, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I think that's where I'm at too. Where like princess quest I think Princess Quest is the canon ending, but then we see all three of them on a hill, and we know Gregory cares about the disappearances, and we know Vanessa would know about the disappearances. So, like, yeah, they probably would go back. So, my thought process is Vanessa knows that the only thing that was keeping this thing trapped was concrete. Concrete that by going down there, they they have given it a way out. So, yeah. what she's got to do now, and what Gregory's got to do now... They got to trap it in one room that they mm -hmm. then concrete over. And that's where we find it in ruin. Um, yeah. When the blob like causes its earthquake or whatever, I think that is what prompts the change in the mimic. Cause it probably does get damaged during that encounter. Yeah, I could see that. Cause I could also see um, some people have speculated that like we have burn trap and then the blob does scoop it up, but the blob being just this, probably just this agony monster um it might just scoop it up and sense the if william afton's corpse or remains are on the mimic it might just want those remains and here here's the so th here's the thing as well about the blob and why i think it's even more likely that burn trap is the mimic mm. um and stop me if you think that i'm like talking at my ass or something but i'm um, ready for it <laughs> We know through looking at the game files at multiple times that the blob is referred to as Tangle. Yes. And I made this a short on my channel, but I, I did see this short, but for those who haven't. Yeah. Throughout the throughout the books, whenever the pile of uh robot parts and human parts that the mimic makes uh in the epilogues, whenever that's described, it is usually referred to as a tangle, which makes me mm -hmm. think that the blob might just be that big pile that's resurrected because it's literally a pile of robot parts and human corpses. So no, that, that, that does track for me. Um, I do wonder my, my big book pull towards the games was always that the majority of the blob starts as the leftovers of the storyteller. I feel like that makes a lot of sense to me. I don't hate that I idea. I don't hate I, that. I just, idea. I don't know why the books would introduce a massive pizza plex wide sprawling wire system that routes to a singular animatronic head. And then the games would have a massive wire monster with a single animatronic, like guiding head. <laughs> like, like to me that, that, that lines up really well. See, but this is, this is the part where you're probably going to argue with me again. I think okay. that that tiger rock head, that is probably the head that we see the mimic have in ruin. <laughs> I think that's what that is. You know, I get that. At the same time, this was and this theory, a lot of people did not like this theory, was that the mimic, the the storyteller head, the game version of it was the Funtime Freddy head. Um, and like I still kind of stand by that, but if that's true, that only works if the books are not canon. 
um, because I don't see it being the Tiger Rock head and then later becoming the Funtime Freddy head. That's weird to me. Um, I, there, there's always been something about the storyteller being the blob that rubbed me the wrong way. And it's specifically mm-hmm. like, if they were getting rid of it, why would they put it down there? You know? Because like, we, Fair. we see in a lot of places where they throw their garbage. They throw them in like back rooms or they throw them in the endo maze, things like that. Them putting the storyteller down there just did not make a lot of sense to me. For me, and this was mainly because this theory came out before we had the story that showed them taking it down. I assume something bad happened, um, as it tends to do at Fazbear. Um, but if we look at where... So so I'll just go into the theory. The theory was it wasn't a Boabab tree in the games. Rather, it was a large Freddy statue. Or at least a Freddy head. In Security Breach, we never had a good answer for that giant Freddy head in like right outside the Pizza Plex. Right. There was never a clean answer for it. And it also, if you look at it, there's like the metal scaffolding that spotlights would be held on. There's that around it. There's wires dangling. To me, and we know that Roxy Raceway is on a sinkhole, it looked like at some point this head was in the Roxy Raceway location and fell down. And they just paved it over and was like, okay, don't talk about that anymore. And whatever was in there is what became the blob. Hmm. So at least the like the material of the blob, right? Because I do agree that the blob seems to be like an agony based creature, but there's physical material in this blob. So to me, whatever was in that head becomes the blob. And if that's true, if we have this large statue with a wired thing with animatronic head inside of it, to me, that's just like, oh, this is the game's version of the storyteller. That's where I was at. And, you know, I could totally see that. I could definitely... And there's a lot of assumptions there. It's not a clean fit, especially now that the books have introduced, oh, they just took it down. So now there isn't even, like, if in the books it was like, oh, and then one day the storyteller caved in. Like, then then that works a lot better. But... <laughs> Honestly, like, um, I'm always open to uh, to alternative ideas. I don't dislike that one. Um, personally, though, I just think that connection with Tangle specifically, because that's such a weird word to use. It's showing oh, yeah. up in both contexts and it's showing up as repeatedly as it does. That, to me, has me convinced, but I could totally see it being a version of the storyteller as well. Um, I, I think have... <laughs> I think we both got. Go I think we both got to agree that the char- that the character encyclopedia is trying to throw us off of this off the scent a little. <laughs> oh yeah, no the the not canon name. I'm like, what are you talking about? What's going on here? Um, and then the, <laughs> the 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 very helpful description it gives us. It may um, have its <laughs> origins in Ennard. Like yeah, <laughs> thanks. Everything does at this point. Um, <laughs> so before we move on to questions, I did want to I prod you for one other answer because, or at least your thoughts. Sure. Um, because I, 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 I have only had a few people on who, um, do believe that the tales are 100% canon just because I'm trying to, you know, it's only, we're at like episode seven, so I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, in Ruin, it's, it, to me, it seems that we have two characters talking to cassie we've got grimmick right we've got the mimic being gregory but then we have helpy Hmm. what are your thoughts on those two entities and are they the same thing because i don't think they are but i don't have a good answer for what helpy would be so i think in order to like discuss what helpy really is we need to discuss what the mask was and what the purpose of the mask Hmm. is because the the mask is definitely that mask is definitely associated with mimic that is 100 percent like associated with glitch trap and the mimic and all that um yeah i think that that mask to me reads as this is what i use to take over someone's mind like i i have them wear it enough eventually they become my next vanny i personally think that helpy in the mask is probably the ruined version of of glitch trap and like i know people often say that it's like he switches personalities i think he doesn't switch personalities but when he's got the purple veins and yellow eyes that's like our hint that something's up you know that's him like letting on a bit too much what he actually is 
I, I agree with that. I, I think where I'm at, I think maybe because uh, the reason I, I disagree that because I've seen some people say that they're both the mimic. Granted, the glitch trap mimic one, like I see that, like I see that connection, but I don't think they are both the mimic that's in the basement. Um, I, I do uh, mainly because of the little argument they have. That, in that in argument Monty is Catwalks. so fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a really fun moment where Helpy's like, I did it. And Gregory's like, yeah, because I helped. Like, that's a fun moment. But I don't I don't think the mimic we see in Ruin has enough vocabulary and is advanced enough to have a pretend argument with itself just to try to convince us even more. I don't see it wanting or thinking it's necessary to do that. Well, the way it, the way it works in my mind is that like um, glitch trap and the mimic. I do think that they like they originate from the same source, but I don't think mm -hmm. that they are like the same entity. They both exist independently, but they have mutual yeah. goals and like a mutual identity almost. Um, I agree with that, especially because I I personally like the thing I try to keep track of is that we know that the mimic at one point had two separate heads. And if we attach yeah. if we attach glitch trap to one of these heads and then just think of the head that we see in ruin as the like mimic, I think then it's clear that we've got like two different entities to keep track of. And I think that's what that scene might have been. Yeah, no, I do agree with that, especially with um that's one of the things that always had me hesitant about the epilogue's mimic, about the like shiny new chrome head that it has. I'm yeah. like, hmm, that's important. Um, <laughs> so I could see, I definitely see like the physical mimic and mimic 01 after going through help wanted being two separate entities fully. Um, I, I guess the, 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 yeah, yeah, I guess I think we just generally agree that it's just, that uh, <laughs> that Helpy would be glitch trap or whatever form of it it currently is, and Gregory is obviously the mimic. Um, and then I guess before we go on, it's kind of a hot topic right now. Do you think Gregory was the one to drop the elevator at the end of Rowan? Oh, geez, um, it's a little bit of a hot topic right now. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know if you've been on Fast yeah, Twitter recently. I, it's I hell am. out here. <laughs> I am. And Tom got suspended, and that's that's such a shame. Um, yeah, and then and then people go to turn around and blame the person who made the thread, who's like fully out of it. It was like I posted a thread and logged off. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> it just it's a whole. Oh man, I I know. Last week I used the I think it was Parks and Rec image of like him coming back with the pizza and everything's on fire. Uh, community. But it's been yeah. <laughs> community. It's been like that for like three days. So like, yeah. I'm just getting used to the heat at this point. Um. Do I think Gregory dropped the elevator? I'm not sure, really. Um, I do. I, I lean more towards the mimic doing it. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I think the battery powering it right next to where we leave the mimic, to me, is really strong evidence for the mimic being the one who drops it. Yeah, um, that is also my belief. But I could honestly see it. The thing is, the files are probably telling us that it was Gregory. Which is, which is so weird to me. Because it seems so out of character from what we see in Security Breach. Granted, we know so little about these characters. Um, but it, it is strange that that would, that the Gregory we see willing to go back into the Pizzaplex to like save kids is like, oh, my closest friend, I'm going to kill you. Like, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, you, you came to save me and I wasn't there. You're kind of dumb, uh, but I got to kill you now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> right like and so i i don't know i know i do know it is interesting to know that all three endings cassie and the mimic are still in that basement so like something's happening um i i do see cassie being our next villain i'm not sure if she's um, going to be our next villain so much as the next like character that needs to be saved but sure i do uh, think I she see, will I, return i basically see her acting as vanny the next time we see her maybe Actually, Which no, I think definitely. Really I do cool. think that. <laughs> I think that could be super cool. Um, and granted, is Vanny a villain or a victim? You know, like that's that's a very valid point there. Yeah, she's kind of um, both. But I think she'll be she'll be acting as the antagonist, even though she is in herself a victim. And I think that would be a very interesting uh plot to go down. Um okay. Well, I think we got that covered. 
yeah, I guess question time. <laughs> unless you had anything else, I was gonna say unless you have anything else, I do have a couple questions here pulled out. Um, uh, yeah, let, let let's hear them. I think I've said what I need on. to say. <laughs> uh, so so we've both so Twitter, this is for you. Uh, I know last time I said this, I got death threats in my DMs, but Twitter, this is for you. Um, we both fully agree that the tales are one hundred percent not canon. So no, what? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait <laughs> wait 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 wait. <laughs> um. So we'll move on to questions. Uh, Stitch, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, he, him. My question is a very random one, but I'm interested to hear what you think about Monty. I believe he was a very forgotten and hated character, so I'd like to hear your thoughts about the character himself and theories about the accusations related to Bonnie's decommission. Uh, thank you for your question. <laughs> As a char- So we'll go the easy one first. As a character, cool design. Um I, I disagree, and I don't want to go too much into this topic, but I disagree that he's the hottest one. Uh, oh, get God. that straight out of here. Uh, oh, we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna delve into that one. Well, but it's not Monty. <laughs> no, it's not. But also, like Monty's not. Un- Listen, Monty's not not hot. He's just got stiff competition with the other three. Exactly. All right? <laughs> Literally, all four of them could be. <laughs> like yeah, like there's an argument. I just I think he's the the he's not the least attractive he's the least like uh, he's not the he's not unattractive he's the least attractive we'll leave it there (laughs) um Um. (laughs) but thoughts about the character himself and theories about accusations relating to bonnie i really really like monty in fact the mouse pad that i've been using for about two years now has his face on it um I thought you were gonna say it was him, like doing the 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 crouch behind pose and the wrist rest. Is no, <laughs> no, but I haven't I haven't gone that far yet. Maybe uh, <laughs> that'd be a pretty good mouse pad. I it mean. would be it would be great. Um, um, as for the accusations, I I think it's I believe them just because like no other character fits as good as he does. Uh, for yeah. for the for uh, I'm assuming this is about who decommission Bonnie. Yeah, who decommissioned Bonnie. Yeah. I think it's got to be him. Um, whether or not he was in control of himself at the time, who's to say, but I think he's got mm-hmm. plenty of motive to uh, to do it regardless of if he was being possessed or not. By Vanny, I mean, not not, not by a yeah. ghost. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I don't think any of the Glamrocks are actively possessed. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think for a very long time, I thought Monty was the only answer. And I do generally still believe Monty is the one who decommissioned Bonnie. I've been of the opinion for a long time that Vanny pretty much programmed him to do it. Why? We don't know. For a while, I was like, oh, so they could get uh, extra parts to help repair uh, the mimic. And then we see all of his parts. <laughs> now so we know that that can't not, be true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> um, so motive, I've got no clue. But as far as material, like means i think the method does make a lot of sense to have vanny use monty as a way to destroy bonnie um why Mm -hmm. uh but i i will say credit to id's fantasy i think she made a really solid argument for prototype freddy being the one to do it right um as as much as i don't like the idea that prototype freddy isn't just freddy (laughs) um (laughs) If if Prototype Freddy is a separate character, I do see him being the one to destroy Bonnie. Um, the motive is still iffy. Uh, I know. I th- I think I said in my video that like if it is him, perhaps because like we see um, beginning of Security Breach, Freddy presumably scans Gregory. Gregory, Freddy presumably <laughs> scans Gregory and um has like a a weird shutdown and like freezes and blacks out, right? Yeah. Um, I think so. I think that instance is because the majority, if not all, of GGY is true, and I think that the Glamrocks, but specifically Freddy, was programmed by GGY to protect GGY at all costs, among other things. And now and he's, then got, whenever he's got conflicting glitch trap or whatever. Orders. Yeah, exactly. The conflicting order was like, uh, uh, and then blacks out. If, um, if prototype Freddy is the one to destroy Bonnie and I'm still unsure of it, but it, it's a worthwhile theory to discuss. Um, I could see a similar thing happening because we do have a lot of evidence that like Freddie and Bonnie really like were close. So if Freddie prototype Freddie, an unstable version of Glamrock Freddie is said, Hey, uh, go like 
get Bonnie for some reason. I could see the programming just messing up and it starts just lashing out at everything, including Bonnie. I mean, yeah, I could see that. I'm still convinced that they are one and the same, but I... I am. I, I, I if, think it makes way too much sense for them to not be one and the same. If it was him, I do think that it, it, they're just the same character and it's just something he did at one point in time. That's also true. It could still be literally Freddy, like, and then, like, Freddy did it and then gets wiped memory clean or whatever have you. Um, but I, I think the most evidence points to Monty. I do agree with that. You, you did bring um, up the conflicting orders thing, and it just makes me think, would it be possible to just win by, by like, yelling at them, walk forwards and backwards at the same time, and then just watch <laughs> them short circuit? I mean, maybe the mimic, right? If the mimic... <laughs> The, the mimic like conceptually is really cool but the moment i start to think about details it falls apart a little bit because if your primary programming is to replicate what you see if i just hold up like pi who you just sh like short circuit like what happens <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i i do i do genu generally agree um that it, it makes the most sense for bonty to be the one to bonty <laughs> for monty to be the one to to decommission bonnie why i've got no clue uh, maybe it's all too much. I've seen some people say that like Bonnie tried to do what Freddie did first. Maybe, maybe you just didn't like him for it. <laughs> yeah, maybe just didn't like him. I will say I'm staunch, staunchly against the he was jealous and wanted to join the band narrative. I don't think that makes sense, especially because he misses shows once he's actually part of it, right? Exactly. He misses shows once he's a part of it. He only ever, we only have evidence of him hating Freddy for some reason. He doesn't have any like, oh, I hate Bonnie. You know, like I we mean, don't see he, anything like that. He could just be homophobic. He could, you know what? <laughs> I agree. Monty, Monty is everyone's <laughs> problematic fave because he's actually homophobic. Um, th That's my answer. Stitch, thank you for your question. Monty's homophobic. Uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question by Trip. She, her, thank you for your question. Uh, I have a super silly question. Is Phone Guy relevant or in Golden Freddy's suit along with Cassidy? Phone Guy tells us in FNAF 1 that the animatronics would stuff us into a suit if they caught us and the princess and the PG. Oh, Phone Guy. Sorry, it immediately <laughs> swapped to acronyms without warning. And the Phone Guy is killed by Golden Freddy on night four. If he isn't in Golden Freddy, maybe he's in a different animatronic or something else. Besides the kids, I can't think of any other character that is killed and stuffed into a suit. If the kids' souls are bound to the suits, why not Phone Guy? He is pretty. He is killed pretty horrifically, too, and it seems like he was in the company for a long time. Thank you for your question. I don't think so. But... I'm his not sure. Agony is, his agony is worth looking into, and his remnant is lo worth looking into. But on the... Like, immediately I'm hesitant. But it is worth look like thinking about. Um, Phone Guy's death is a, is a really weird hangnail in this series because like he's he's a character who straight up is killed randomly. We don't know if he had any yeah. connection to any of the story really. Um, personally, I think because it ends with like the Golden Freddy jump scare sound, and I yes. don't think that like if you get killed by him, I'm not sure you're getting stuffed in a suit anyway. I think you might just like evaporate. <laughs> right. But also cause like we hear the golden Freddy sound at the end, but also I'm pretty sure like every single, like he's having the worst night of his life in that. Phone yeah. Call. He's so got any at least of them could have done it. He's got at least <laughs> like, one door shut. Cause we hear Foxy pounding on it. We Some... hear Foxy. We hear the like Chica breath yeah. or like the Chica Bonnie breath. I think Freddie's music box is going off like, or like his yeah. laugh is going off. Like, <laughs> It's, it's his music night. box. It's his music box that like starts up near the end, and that's when he starts going like, "Oh, oh no!" <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, "Hey, uh, I'm I'm doing bad over here." <laughs> um, Still, congrats yeah, I... to that guy. He took his final moments out to just tell his like subordinate employee, "Like, hey, can you make sure that they like check the room tomorrow?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like shout out, like, hey, can you just please look for my body? Uh, I don't think I'm getting out of here, dude. Oh, uh, maybe he read <laughs> alone together. He knows what happens. <laughs> True. That, I mean, that is another good point, right? Because if that body does get put into an animatronic, which we're not sure of, but if it does, and he gets then found, that would imply that he would be wandering around this facility looking for stuff. Yeah, I don't think. Um, first off, yeah. I don't think Scott ever like intended him to have story relevance past the first no. game. 
So I, I don't, don't think, think he's Scott doing anything. Had, I don't think Scott intended story relevance past the first game. True, true. <laughs> like, um, well, it could be, it could be a thing where like a detail from earlier is like, okay, well, I want to introduce something. Is there anything I can pull from? Right. I do think that like, uh, if we consider that <sighs> his death makes no sense, really. Because he doesn't yeah. get stuffed as far as we know. But if he does get stuffed, where did it go? And yeah. does it even matter? And I'm not sure any of that is true. Yeah, I don't know. Because like, if we're looking at the FNAF 1 game over screen, we can probably assume that to be Michael, right? Yeah. Like 100% so that is him. If that's true, would, like, wouldn't we see Phone Guy in that storage room? Yeah. Especially so, like, if he died it, on night five. Especially, we'll also consider... Or night four, I mean. We, I guess technically we don't know when these voicemails were recorded. We could go the route of if FNAF 1 takes place after the restaurant has closed down and Michael's just like working these odd jobs trying to like find William. Then it there is a possibility the where past. he died a way long time ago and he has since been found and taken out of the facility. That's possible. First off, it's definitely not what was intended when Scott made the game. No, not at all. But, not even a little bit. I don't think I don't think the pizzeria being closed was intended, but I do think it's very likely nowadays. Yeah. But I do think that like I don't know. That's a weird one. That's a weird one. Uh phone guy, he just can we just say that he I, left? He got up and left. Nothing happened yeah, to him. He, I'll tell you what, I don't <laughs> think it's Golden Freddy. Yeah, I don't think first, Phone Guy is Golden Freddy. I'm pretty strong against that. Very much. Um, very much. He is not could, him. You could make an argument. It's just, it's a big fight you're going to have to do to, like, prove that versus the swath of evidence for, like, Cassidy, even Crying Child compared to Phone Guy. Oh, yeah. Um, Straight up, like, at least Crying Child and Fredbear were seen in the same room together at one point. Yeah. It, it's a matter of, like, it's it's the, uh, the strong, it's the, the one meme where it's just the smaller dude with the sword and the giant monster and the smaller dude with the sword's phone guy is golden freddy and the giant monster is the log book like <laughs> um but then there's an even larger one behind him where it, it says the silver eye says michael brooks is golden freddy yeah exactly exactly <laughs> um so yeah i i don't think so i think it's worth looking into like i i think he might be relevant in some way at some point but as of right now i don't think he is but thank you for your question um we'll move on to bell uh thank you for your question she her and we kind of touched on this but it's a different aspect of it uh i have a question about vanny's mask in security breach and ruin is the mask that cassie uses the same one as that vanny uses or different also what's with the rabbit spray paint and rabbit mask bot who made them okay uh thank you for your question i have i have a video on this as well um mm -hmm. i think that they're two separate masks uh, they look very different. We have seen them both in Security Breach's trailer, but they're presented as different items. Yeah. Um, Cassie does say, hey, she's wearing my mask, but also Cassie's like eight or something. Yeah, Cassie's a dumb kid, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I just um, think that straight up, that mask was not supposed to be worn by Vanny. It was just a weapon for her to use. I I don't think they're the same mask. To me, because we see it in Help Wanted too, or at least we see like that shape and that color, maybe not with the wires, but we see like that weird Vanny mask in Help Wanted as well. And we also see it in Princess Quest. Yeah. To me, I would assume that the Vanny mask, that ca the, v uh, the, the, the Van Eye mask, so I can say this quickly, <laughs> the, the Van Eye mask is the tool that is used to turn someone into an Afton mind slave, like Vanny, like GGY. Whereas the mask that we see Vanny use in Security Breach is something she made to operate as Vanny and still have contact. Yeah, that's just um, her disguise. That's where I'm at. Yeah. yeah, like that's the disguise. That's what she uses. Maybe there's like not necessarily an illusion disc, but whatever allows her to not be seen by the animatronics is in that suit. Like that's also what a that's voice for. changer. Yeah, voice like changer. That. Um, whereas the Van Eye mask is specifically this will turn you into my slave, and then I you do not have to wear it anymore once it is done. So as for like uh Matt bot and the spray paint and all that, I do believe that uh 
Cassie was not the first person to visit the ruined Pizzaplex. Mm. I think that whoever went in before her was probably an actual technician and the mask was intended for them. I'm not sure if it's her father or if it's someone else or like a team of other people, but sure. that is the impression I get that she was there after that happened and probably Mixus killed the, killed them off or the, I could see, yeah. I could see that. Um, I could definitely see like Cassie was the first successful one. Yeah. I could also see somebody raised an interesting point with B7 too. Um, now I don't like B7. I've made that very clear, but B7 two gives us something interesting where the, the like mind of B7 splits off from Billy and becomes its own thing. Um, if we are to take that with Vanny, it is possible that after Princess Quest happens and Vanessa is freed, the Vanny like persona doesn't necessarily just dissolve into the ether, but is just removed from Vanessa and is now a thing that can operate. So maybe it's not that it was Vanny, but it was this servant like mentality that will operate and become whatever it inhabits similar to the mimic in a way like it's it's using that person almost as a costume right so if yeah. that's true i could see that vanny entity maybe taking over a staff bot or two or trying to set up this trap to get a new person in there and that's where like the rabbit mask bot comes from that's where the rabbit uh dj music man's come from because like it's this servant trying to like make a good trap to catch someone I could see that. I, it's I, it's out there. I could but see it's, that for but me. I, one of the one of the few explanations for why there's Vanny spray paint in the ruined part of the pizza plex. Like that's weird. Once you get past the lobby, any spray paint is suspect to me. <laughs> I just see it as more likely to be specifically Cassie's dad. I think Cassie's dad yeah. has a great like uh, like he was briefly another Vanny um, before dying. And it's stuff like, see that. like, why him of all characters? What do we know about him? We know he likes Bonnie a lot. Uh, we yeah. know that he's been with the company for a while. Uh, we know he's a technician. He just ends up being a good candidate um, to be someone to be working to try to restore the place and to free the mimic, I think. I think yeah. that was the ultimate goal. I, I almost see Cassie's dad as kind of being the first Gregory and failing there. Um, and like trying to like, even before the pizza plex is ruined, like bon he knows something happened to Bonnie. So like, he's like, okay, something's up here. Um, and I could see him being an even earlier victim. Hell, maybe he even is the one to move into Bonnie since there's some weird connection with Bonnie being on, even though he's destroyed. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's interesting. Cassie's dad is a very, I feel like we're good. I feel like we are not done hearing about Cassie's dad in the games. I hope not. Um, he's, he's a character I want to know more about. We don't even have a sure. name for him yet. He's going to be the next crying child. He, he, he's Mr. Cassie's dad. I, well, <laughs> that's his canon name. Thank you very much. Um, exactly. uh, but thank you for your question, Belle. Um, as far as, and then we've got one more question here. What time, what we, what we got time wise? We're at, 120 uh we could probably squeeze yeah, one more question i got 127 we've been on my flying end. through yeah perfect so we, we we're flying through these um the last question i've got pulled up anyway so uh jen thank you for the question pronouns she her how do you think remnant works by that i mean what do you think it's made of do you think it's raw painful emotions similar to agony do you believe it's more like soul oh, no. juice uh yeah we're getting we're this getting into the details of question. something have, it's a loaded question but it's a loaded question we have no context for realistically so <laughs> we'll see where it goes yeah, i'm gonna start feeling um, like one of those tiktok psychics <laughs> right it's more like soul juice slash soul energy turned into some sort of liquid or meshes of souls turned into boiled down metal do you think whatever the substance of remnant is can corrupt animatronics if injected in too big a quantity inside a robot and do you think there's more than one type of remnant powered by different emotions? So thank you for your question. I think we should start with a baseline of what we do know for sure about remnant. Right. Right. And that would come from the silver eyes trilogy. That, realistically, that would come we, from in, the silver eyes and the, it would come from pizza sim. Pizza sim. Um, what little we learn about in pizza sim. And does I forgive. I, again, I didn't read Fazbear, but does Talbert, does Phineas talk about remnant or is he just agony? Um, I don't think he mentions Remnant, but I do know that he mentions Agony. 
Uh, yeah, and, and agony should be a part of this conversation too. And, it is a very yeah. I mean, the agony of this is, character encyclopedia also refer to it as dark remnant. So yeah. like that's important. Agony is um, absolutely a type of well, well maybe right? dark remnant is just remnant <laughs> that's infused with agony. I think that might maybe, just be it. maybe. Um, so remnant itself, right? F correct me if I'm wrong because I feel like you'll know more about this because again I'm only part way through. From what I understand remnant is taking the metal of a of something that is p actively possessed melting it down into a, a a type of liquid that then that can then be injected into other things to force whatever is possessing what you melted down into the new thing i'm not sure if remnant necessarily has to take a liquid form i think the best way sure. to describe remnant is just haunted metal in general like the only the only real requirement is it has to be exposed to it, it has to be exposed to I think the requirements are human flesh and sure. a human spirit um and metal those are the three ingredients that you need to make remnant um yeah. after that after that it's very like loose it can be a liquid you can inject it in things to produce possession although I'm not sure if it's possession by the actual spirit or if it's or just, just it's like a new a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one of the ways that I've been interpreting Remnant in the games specifically is it's more so just a way to measure spiritual energy. Um, sure. Like in the Dragon sense Ball. Of like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, 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 uh, Golden Freddy is about a 400 on this charts, I would say. <laughs> At least if we're going by Dragon Ball rules, because he's not, I'll tell you what, he's not the goddamn the meme the over nine thousand i'll tell you none none of the uh, the uh fazbear animatronics have anything on goku that's not happening like, that's a, <laughs> i don't know i feel um, like golden freddy could beat goku <laughs> you know what yeah that's the official statement is golden yeah. freddy could probably take goku um not neither of them could beat anya forger though that's, uh, that's, a loss that, that that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun twitter clip yeah <laughs> um that might be the cold open we'll see that's <laughs> um but as far as um remnant in the games i feel like it's one of those things where it it kind of needed to happen for the story to go in the direction he wanted it to but it it introduced so many weird inconsistencies that i kind of wish it wasn't introduced yeah because it is it's very strange it, it it's one of those things where like it's such a specific and detail oriented piece of information in a franchise that's so vague i think part of it is just generally speaking introducing rules into a supernatural story that kind of takes away an element of it because yeah because then it becomes understandable it start it stops going from supernatural to something you can predict and measure, which just makes it natural. Yeah. And I mean, that's a matter of like, I think, I think kind of what alone together maybe might be trying to pull us towards where like, not necessarily rules, but like specific measurements in a way, like, cause like with, uh, with alone together, we do get the like, Oh yeah, there are steps to a possession and there are ways to help a ghost move on. And you can call those rules, but they're still vague enough and loose enough that it's still, oh, it's spooky. Who knows what's gonna happen? I definitely um, prefer where, Alone Together's rules more than like Remnant as a concept in for general. Sure. For sure. I think Remnant as its purpose was trying to introduce a way that ghosts can go from one haunted animatronic to another. And I don't know if that was the best way to do it. But I think yeah. that's primarily what it serves in F FNAF in general, is just a way to have a ghost move from one machine to another. Right. And I think, actually, the game that that applies best to, and something that I have actually used Remnant for to explain in the past, is what I think the toys are in FNAF 2. Because I do think that, although they... I fully agree. Although I don't think <laughs> that they were ever stuffed... I do still consider them possessed because they were made with parts that were taken from the withers. So I they fully agree with it. That's my that's my explanation for um, molten MCI. Actually, um, it's because I think the toys and the withers, since the the parts from the withers were used for the toys, 
the withered stay and move on to like the FNAF one and things like that. The toys, the only thing we hear about them is they're s- scrapped, you know? Yeah. So we have these, ha- these haunted robots that no one is accounting for. And William needs something to inject into the fun times. So that, that's where I see that path going. Now here's a fun, here, here's a fun thing. And uh sure. little, little thought uh, process. Now, if we consider that the toys are probably haunted by the first MCI kids, uh, yeah. the the ones who were the withers and the ones who were the classics, is it yeah. then possible that the phantoms in FNAF three, because that box of toy parts is there, is it possible that they are the spirits? I'm not opposed to it. Also, consider right, all the phantoms are burnt. Yeah, they're burnt. The toys, they're gross. If the toys had been used to melt down into remnant for the fun times. If whatever is left over is in that box in FNAF three, it's super vague, but if you melt something down and then it appears as a ghost burnt, maybe the process of making remnant is not so great for the thing you're making into remnant. (laughs) And I, I (laughs) we're very speculative there, but I do genuinely prefer that to the idea of the phantoms being hallucinations or Springtrap making them somehow. Um, I don't think Springtrap's making them, but I, I, I think it's either... I, I, I hadn't considered the toys, but um, I, I'd been of the camp of hallucinations, but that toys, that toys line is interesting. Yeah. I think the toys genuinely, like, people need to pay more attention to, like, what happened to them, because they're probably the ones who are mm-hmm. out of the story quickest. Yeah. No, that, that was very strange that literally they exist in the story for, like, a month. And then they're just gone. And what happens to them? They just stop existing. I think there's more to Right? It. Like, they're just haunted in a dumpster somewhere. Like, th- something's <laughs> up with that. Um, but, Jen, thank you for your question. And I think at this point, it's probably good to call it. So, yep. uh, uh, D- Demuted, do you have anything you want to shout out? Any upcoming projects? Uh, anything like that? Um, uh, I, I would just uh, say that I am working on a Halloween special. Um, because of the poor performance of my part one of the Poppy one, I decided I'm not going to do chapter two. I'm going to do something sure. brand new, and I think people are really going to like it. Um, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, and definitely, if you do watch my stuff, or if you are only finding out about me now, use hashtag DemutedFanArt for a chance for your art to be featured in that Halloween special. Um... Thank you very much. That's super dope. I'm excited to see it. Um, yeah. Also, yeah. For whatever reason, my poppy content also does not perform super well. I had one really decent performing one, and then in January, I tried to cover like Boxy Boo and potential Chapter Three stuff, and it bombed. So there's, some, there's something there. It's a curse right now. I, I hope I'm hoping with the Chapter Three release, whatever, because I will be doing a video on Chapter Three. I'm super excited for it. Whenever that, I hope the momentum of it coming out will allow my video to not bomb so we'll find out <laughs> okay okay um but this has been the freddy fazbear pizza podcast if you want your questions or theories talked about on the podcast you can submit it at the email freddy fazbear pizza podcast at gmail.com the email is in the description because it's a pain to type out just copy and paste it we Ooh. are on youtube youtube music spotify apple music amazon and that's it because i'm too lazy to add it anywhere else figure it out that's like five options Hell yeah. um but <laughs> thank you all for coming coming by let me pull up the uh, outro because it's only episode seven and i keep forgetting it thank you for watching the freddy fazbear pizza podcast where the pizza abilities are endless we hope to enjoy your future patronage bye-bye for now bye-bye